Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, whatever time you are joining this CSA presentation, welcome um, to my honors thesis presentation. My name is Rachel Hefner, and my the title of my research study is Exploring How Students of Color Build Social Capital at a Predominantly White Institution. Here is a brief outline of what we are going to cover today in our presentation. To begin, I wanted to give a little bit of historical context, um, and then I'm going to loop that into my research interest and why I picked this particular topic, and also explain a little bit of my personal limitations. Um, so to begin, it is clear that our country is built on 400 years of racism and white supremacy that has created just a myriad of disparities between people of color and white people. At the time of deciding exactly what I was going to research for my thesis, the Black Lives Matter movement was resurging in momentum after the terrible murder of George Floyd in May of 2020. When I reflect on my research interest, it, it definitely stems from many authentic relationships with BIPOC students at Meredith who shared with me very serious barriers that they were facing at Meredith that I, as a white woman, simply was not. One particular avenue that I found to be of interest was the creation and maintenance of social capital. Social capital is the effective functioning of social groups through interpersonal relationships, a shared sense of identity, a shared understanding, shared norms, shared values, trust, cooperation, and reciprocity. In essence, and this was another definition given, it is relationships that are meaningful and beneficial in nature. And so obviously college is a unique time to explore social capital. Um, and from my initial review, there is limited research on social capital among BIPOC students at a predominantly white institution. Um, as a white woman, I acknowledge that none of my experiences on campus or the relationships that I've built can fully prepare me for this research experience, nor negate my own personal biases and privileges, but utilizing best research practices and qualitative analysis, empathy and compassion, I hope to present these stories in a dignified and respectful way. Um, so we're going to utilize the definition of social capital from the introduction, so feel free to rewind if you need a refresher at any point. Um, I also wanted to share a few other terms that I think would be helpful um, for this presentation. So person of color and BIPOC will be used interchangeably for a person who identifies with one or more of the following identities, Black, Indigenous, Latino or Hispanic, Asian or another ethnic or racial minority group. A predominantly white institution, or PWI, is the term used to describe institutions of higher learning in which white students account for 50% or greater of the student enrollment. Additionally, DEI stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And then to move on to my methodology, my recruitment process entailed sending emails to clubs that were considered multicultural or multi-ethnic spaces on campus as well as academic departments. Five participants were recruited voluntarily, um, and the size limitations were for a myriad of reasons, um, including doing my thesis during my senior year in a pandemic, and also a um, small population of BIPOC students on Meredith's campus who meet the eligibility requirements. Um, but I do consider this to be a pilot study and that hopefully this um, research can be utilized again in the future to gather more information. Um, each participant completed a semi-structured interview that asked questions about their social capital on campus, including describing meaningful relationships they've had at Meredith, how they created these relationships, just to name a few. Um, after the interview, I completed transcriptions of each interview and completed qualitative analysis using grounded theory. And so grounded theory included line by line coding, establishing themes and categories, and eventually um, discovering my main findings. So if, a few facts about the participants that I think are relevant. Um, a majority of participants attended predominantly white high schools. All participants shared that race or ethnicity played a role in their ability to build social capital on campus. 
A majority of participants shared that they felt another identity also played a role in their ability to build social capital on campus. So whether that be being a commuter or being a part of another scholarship group. And lastly, three out of five of the participants shared additional information after recording was stopped because they felt that, um, and they didn't want it to be included in the analysis because they felt that it would make them identifiable. So to move on to my, my findings, using grounded theory, I was able to create codes and eventually categories for themes from the data. The first theme I found was finding and utilizing BIPOC spaces. This theme reflected physical, emotional, and intellectual spaces that were intentionally designed to serve and support BIPOC students. In many cases, these spaces, which can manifest in physical locations on campus, staff, or clubs were in essence pre-approved by other BIPOC students and peers to be spaces that would be safe. The relationships that were developed in these spaces were shared by a majority of participants to be more authentic and sustaining. Additionally, another category was entering white spaces. It is a necessity for BIPOC students at Merida to enter white spaces because white spaces are the predominant, um, a majority of spaces on campus are white spaces. There are varying levels of comfort among participants of navigating these white spaces, whether that be traditions, classes, professors, office, or the Kate Center to develop social capital. Many of the participants shared that the social capital created in these spaces was positive when the qualities of the individual included understanding their own whiteness as an example. In other cases, the capital that was built in these spaces was negative and expended a lot of energy from the participants. The next category was timing of connections. Um, one finding um, was that it was clear that all participants were involved in some kind of pre-Meredith experience or an experience early on um, in their Meredith um, experience that whether that be an event or a scholarship group that connected over the summer or something that happened during orientation that was significant in their social capital experience. Um, without me asking when these relationships were created, every participant um, informed me exactly when they were, and they were always in the beginning of their Meredith experience. Um, and a majority of these early experiences designed that were specifically designed to support and serve BIPOC students were positive for participants. Additionally, another category was naming extrinsic benefits. When I asked participants to share what values they associated with the relationships they had created, many participants did not share shared values, but benefits that they were receiving. And these benefits could include anything from academic support, guidance, scholarship funds, or resume builders. And lastly, a category that arose was identifying comfort and discomfort. And many participants utilized the word comfort, comfort or another form of the word to explain their relationships on campus. So often this was associated with comfort in spaces, like mentioned before, that were pre-approved or because they were experienced in the circumstances that they were in, meaning that they had already had experiences in predominantly white spaces. And the discomfort was mentioned in cases of traditions that were heavily orchestrated or not casual or inclusive, classes and professors with quote unquote bad energy, and entering white spaces that they themselves were ill-prepared for because of the lack of resources that the college has allotted to supporting and serving BIPOC students. And from these categories, my main findings were that early exposure and access to supportive spaces created intentionally for BIPOC students is needed to support BIPOC students in building social capital. Despite varying levels of comfort or discomfort, BIPOC students are still able to get extrinsic benefits related to social capital in white spaces on campus. And so what does this mean for the college? Um, it would benefit BIPOC students to create more spaces with the specific intention of serving and supporting BIPOC students. The majority of spaces on campus are designed to amplify and support white students. This has a negative impact on the ability for BIPOC students to build social capital. As the majority of participants were able to build positive social capital prior to starting classes, coming to campus, or early in their academic career, investing time and resources to create these opportunities for incoming BIPOC students could be beneficial. These findings of the study may apply to other marginalized groups on campus as well. 
And so where do we come from here? I wanted to conclude my presentation with recommendations. As part of my interview, I asked participants to share something Meredith can do to facilitate the relationships that they desired. So I wanted to utilize this time to share the recommendations with the audience. So some of the recommendations were to create a multi-ethnic, multicultural student center, making traditions more inclusive, creating more casual avenues for creating relationships, creating a course much like our first year experience course that explores concepts including microaggressions, identities, world context, and hiring more BIPOC professors and administrators. As far as acknowledgements, I want to sincerely and humbly thank the participants who shared their Meredith experience with me, whether that be at the end of their journey or in the middle or at the beginning. And I am forever grateful for you spending your time um, in sharing your experience with me. I also want to thank Dr. Joy Learman, my faculty advisor, um, for this project, as well as the social work and Spanish professors who have guided me through my Meredith experience and um, added to my ability to do this research in a culturally humble way, as well as the Meredith Honors Program, other Meredith faculty and staff mentors, and my friends and family as well who supported me through this journey. If you have any questions on my research, my methodology, or my findings, please feel free to email me. If it is after graduation that you are viewing this presentation, please utilize the at vcu.edu email. Thank you so much for participating in our virtual CSA day and for listening to my presentation.